Hey y'all, checking in. Wasn't gonna do a video yet. I was gonna start it when I got home, but Piper did it again. Yep. Down there. There's a hole. Yep. I don't understand. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to see if we can get this thing plugged off. Got one ordered. Son's on his way. Three hours from home. And we're supposed to deliver that one on Monday in Virginia. So we did get a load, but I don't know if we're going to get to deliver it or not. So I think it's, I think we need to do something different because, I mean, this one just, I mean, it's just not doing the stuff anymore. I think a lot of this is from the guy that just did the transmission and uh, will not be going back to overtime diesel. So, uh, you know, not had any problems with fan until the transmission stuff. So, uh, something caused the fan to grab a hold of the fan shroud, chuck a piece of it in the radiator. So, that's where we are. So, but anyway, that's update. We're starting our, our week off this, on Saturday the 14th and it's not going well. So, but uh, <laughs> I'll keep you updated. So, I'll see you soon. Good morning. Checking in. Well, we're home. We got here late yesterday evening and uh, sun's coming back here this morning. Uh, we get the radiator. Because the fella didn't use his brain box. They had it in Barbersville. He went through there and picked it up. And, well, maybe I already have Viper going. But, you know, it's what you get when you get frustrated, I reckon. So, but we got to get antifreeze and uh, some oil dry and, and stuff. And so we got a mess up there. So we got to get all that done. But, um, been thinking on it last night. And we're going to check the motor mounts. Thinking, what if, you know, where the transmission's been in and out 16,752 times, if the motor mount hasn't hasn't broke one of them, you know, the weight and stuff. So, you need to make sure it's not raising up, because uh, it's possible that the engine rocked and caught the, and caused it to catch. So, might be doing that there too. So, might have to check the jack, and I don't, yeah, I don't even know. So, something a good thing about Anyway, I'll keep you updated, and probably when I get up there, because I couldn't find many videos on changing this radiator. So maybe I'm gonna try. Maybe we'll try to record it, putting it in. So uh, that way, feller, fella, whoever might, maybe it'll help you out. I don't know, you know. So, but we're gonna get this stuff and get out here and get ready to get loaded, so we can get on the road. It's 7:22. Auto zone. There, yeah, I'm. They might be there now. So I'll probably go check on that. So anyway. We'll check with you here in just a little bit and let you know how things are going. Talk to you soon. Okay, well, we made it up here. The Viper, we got sun just took off here uh, a couple minutes ago. We we're getting ready to start getting everything out and get it ready. And uh, we're going to get y'all set up. Uh, battery's a little low in the back, but so I had to use my auxiliary battery thing to charge it up so uh, I can get some video footage. So, Fella really needs a time lapse video for their, yeah, camera, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, anyway, let's get the tools out. Let's get some stuff done. We want to check those murder mounts real quick, and then I'll get y'all set up and brought in there, and we'll start putting the radiator in. So, I'll see y'all in just a few once we get her set up. All right, let me get you in here. So, we had to take the grill out. Because there's some bolts and stuff in here. It's got a, for the, the yeah, yeah, the thing, you know, the transmission cooler. So, but we're, but we're fixing to set her back down in that hole right there and get her moving. So, uh, you know, enough procrastinating. Let's, well, let's get after it. So, here we go.
right, well, let's get back on the time lapse, see what y'all can see, and hopefully I'll bring you back in on the certain things there, but let's go. knocked you down but let's put back up first all right now let's get back here what are y'all even looking at let's let's get you over here so you can see what we've done so far all right so uh there's the transmission cooler right here it's you have to slide them back in these little slots there there's one down in there too i don't know if how well you can see it but then you got a bolt there and a bolt right there and then this line here has got a little bolt there kind of holds it in place now we've already got the lower radiator hose back on it definitely went on better easier and it went off but uh got these right here he's got these little rings right here i'm hoping that i got them seated in there all the way it felt like it uh but these right here are not wanting to go back on the new clips i don't know so I uh, haven't tried that yet, but um, got that one right there. The AXC line bolts up right there. So, I mean, the radiator and transmission cooler are in. I mean, so we really got to put that on there. I mean, we're, we're getting there. So, get you up and get you down there. Here, see if we can see what we're doing here. So here's the boost tube. It's got to go back down. Can we see it from here? Yep. All right. All right. So, right there, that's where that's got to go. We got to get it down here so we can tighten that. I think we can do it from here. Tighten that back up. But as you can tell, the other end of the boost too goes over there, right there. So we got to work it back down in there. But uh, here's my block here i don't know where the cord went to maybe i should try to find it while we're in here yeah probably not but anyway we're going to see then we got to put all this bag in and, and you know air box and but we're making progress we're almost ready to put fluid back in so and if a fella would have used his brain box yesterday we'd have had that radiator back in yesterday but i didn't even think about my son coming through west virginia where you know we ordered a radiator from so i was more focused on getting my wife and miss rayland home so uh but that's where we are anyway we're going to take a quick breather get stuff underneath the truck and we'll bring you back in here shortly 
All right, updates. Really hot, so uh, I've been trying to kind of rough the video, especially since I've been underneath. But I mean, you got the air box back in. We got somewhat of a fan shroud, but we can't put it all back because the other one's tore all to pieces. So, but I mean, this end grill, you know, it's back in. You got the boost tubes. You know, right there going off the turbos, going down there. We got that tight, that, uh, that, uh, lower radiator hose. I tell you what, I, I don't know who designed these, these clamps, but I ain't kidding you. They need to be horse whipped. And I, I mean, just that, they ain't convenient at all. So, uh, we did the right thing and went back there in this toolbox and, another hose clamp that has threads on it and put that in there so but uh we're gonna end up antifreeze in here and fire up viper so uh let me do that and we'll bring you back in here in just a few minutes when she's running so it's alive. It's alive. well four gallons of antifreeze and she's running Got a, you know, I don't see any leaks other than 19 gallons of spill, but you know, we gotta, we gotta let her get up the temperature, make sure we don't need to go, hopefully that place over there has got some more if we need it. Right now, looks like we're good, but you never can tell, so. Uh, still gotta stick the inner fender well back in. Didn't want to put it back in yet, until, you know, we got in here to make sure nothing was going where it shouldn't. So, but, uh, but anyway, uh, that's your update right now, and well, hopefully within the next, you know, 30 minutes, we'll be rolling, so, uh, see how things are going, so anyway, that's your update, uh, and I'll keep you posted, and I'll see you soon. All right, y'all, well, let's flip you around here. We're setting it. There we go. 95 degrees outside, the coolant temps 192, trans 145, so I think we're good. Uh, man, we definitely need a shower. But anyway, uh, just real quick, you know, and I think I've mentioned this before, but if you're doing RV transport, hot shot, I mean, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're, you know, if you're using trucks, whatever, and you don't have basic tools, I mean, because had I not had tools back there, now you don't need the battery power impacts and all that kind of stuff, you know that, but it does help, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, you need at least some basic hand tools out of here, guys. You know, I've had to change the wheel bearing, uh, and then I've had to, now I've had to change the radiator, and I've had everything I needed right here on the truck. And and I'm just it's so vital to have that stuff out here because if you had to call a road service to come out here or you had to get a tow and then get it, then pay a shop to do this i mean you're talking probably you know over well over well i can guarantee you'd be over a thousand bucks to the radiators over you know uh i get a commercial discount through my uh auto zone and it was and i still spent 302 on uh uh, but every time I got the radiator and uh, another gallon of antifreeze, I already had two, and so or I had three. So I mean, I put four in this, and so you know, when you take that to a shop, I mean, it's going to be expensive. So you know, learn to, to do some stuff. You know, to your truck or stuff all over. You know, YouTube, and this you know will definitely be on the channel now. So, uh, but I mean, don't be afraid to get out there and do some wrenches and figure it out and call people and ask. And they carry some tools with you so in case something happens like this you know it's it's not catastrophic you, you can fix it and, and keep moving so um and so we're uh we're getting ready to head out of here but everything's looking great no leaks i mean we're i mean she sounds i mean it looks like it's worked out so viper hopefully you know behaves for a while let's you know still got to get the fan shroud we'll call around and find that and get that done but I think we'll be okay right now. So, but anyhow, I'll keep you updated and I'll see you soon. Good morning. Well, it's seven o'clock. Plan to already been on the road, but 
be honest with you, this fella is a bit nervous. I just, I can't, don't trust the Bible. It's, it, you know, yesterday, crane's temperature still got a little warm, finally come down, did the thing. Did a surge in this morning. Yeah. I don't know, it's just, something don't feel right. Ain't sitting, ain't sitting with the fella. So, I gotta make a decision. I gotta, I gotta do something different, because, can't depend on this one then yeah what do you do so but anyhow we're going to attempt yeah you know, once our 15 minutes is up here we start hooking up it's like dang it so but anyhow we gotta wait our clock get finished up there and i guess we're gonna try to head to virginia and see what happens so i'll keep y'all updated well chicken in we made it uh, matter of fact, they've already checked us in and got us finished unhooking stuff, grab our license plate, and then go up there and get our paperwork. But uh, I do believe we found what's going on with Viper. And I told you, when we're in Rocky, uh, it just fights us. But I believe Turbo Actuator has left the party again. So. Anyway, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. We're probably going to stop and go camping this evening because we're close to Lewisburg Waste Offer Springs area. Oh, yeah. Y'all like my new hat? Hodge Twins. Took them a month, almost a month and a half to get it to me, but, you know, I like it. So, all right. Well, let's get this thing unhooked, and we'll see y'all here soon. Good morning. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's morning. But we made it home yesterday evening by nine o'clock. Testing on the boost, boost pressure sensor. You know, took that out because it didn't have one. So we did the right thing and just tried to clean it again. Stuck it back in, dumped some more fuel out of the cleaner stuff. And thank nothing. So this morning I was like, well, I'm wondering if it's a tune. So I switched it and put it back in the other tune that we had. In it before and didn't really change anything i mean it's quicker now and it's and it is making it build some boost but it's like a terrible turbo lag so we're thinking maybe a boost pressure sensor i don't know i'm hoping that i didn't get antifreeze or something down in the uh turbo actuator and fry it maybe you know so i don't know so we're just so we bought this here boost gauge you know Moving up in the world, but uh, we're not going. I'm not planning on installing it. Just planning on uh, hooking it up out there, uh, just to test on the boost, so we can actually get a, a reading. Because hooking up the scan tool with it connected, it's showing it's got boost when the truck's not even running. So um, maybe the it's reading something wrong. I don't know. I'm hoping it's just a boost sensor. I can order one of those. Have it back here tomorrow, and you know, or something. And, me and be done so i don't know that's where we are right now so we're just gonna do that and test on that and, and i'll bring you back in let you know and we'll wrap this video up here pretty soon but This is going to be really fun. Yeah, boy. Ding, 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 ding. Round 50. Yep. Get my. I need a raise. <laughs> All right, so I called Ovi, the dude that built the transmission. You know, uh, and he suggested trying something so we're gonna we're gonna try on it let me see if i can get you up here because i just went down the road and and i had it it was doing the thing and exhaust brake was kicking in and all that so obi suggested get back there get over oh, there all the way maybe is this is actually the exhaust pressure back pressure sensor and it goes into a little tube 
right down there and it goes into the side of the exhaust um, he said to try to take that uh, that loose and he said a lot of times they get stopped up so well we're gonna try to take that off first so uh, praying that takes care of Viper so I mean fellers not I mean you know, I've been a little stressed out today more than usual so, but anyhow, we're going to check that out, and I'll let you all know and keep you updated and all that good stuff. But, you know, praying that this takes care of it, and it's a simple fix, and it's not another $3,000. So, all right, all right, I'll see you soon. <laughs> well, it's morning. It's trying to rain. Not good, because we got work to do. <clears throat> Yesterday, updates, uh, we got, we went out and done some stuff with Viper. Seems to be running fine, but we got another issue. <laughs> Check this picture out. We did it again! So, radiator, another hole. I don't know what happened, or, or well, I do now, I think. Pretty sure that, because I like measured it, it's like two and a half inches from the fan to the radiator. So I'm like, how does something move, flex, whatever, that far? Well, um, I had my son come over last night, and he laid up underneath the truck, and it looks like the driver's side motor mount is toast. So I ordered both motor mounts. Then my driver's side one won't be here till tomorrow. Supposed to be in North Carolina tomorrow. So I don't know how it's gonna work out, but you got the radiator and passenger side one will be here this morning. And yeah, I have to buy another radiator. Uh, so we're gonna change on that. I love having to change the radiator again. It's awesome. No. <laughs> Not really. But you know, you ain't got no choice. But uh, anyhow, we're gonna change on that. Well, we got the surgical table prepared, and we got the patient ready. So, time we get uh, get on there and, and get after it, you know what I mean? So, uh, we're going to try something a little different today. We're going to try to hyperlapse and see how well that does and record and see if that's not a good way to do a time lapse. And let's get this thing uh, apart. Well, we're making some progress. So, that got the grill out, uh, the air box, you know, where it brings the air in and look the overflow. Uh, I think I can leave this in till we get it out, then we'll pop that off there. We still got to do the transmission lines, cooler. I mean, I'm already I'm in there, but I got to go underneath, and so I don't want transmission fluid draining all over me. So, we had to, this is 11 millimeter, take that off. And then there's another one down there, which I think I showed you before. You got to take this tube right here and get it back out the way. So uh, that way you can get in there to this hose here and get it out. And then uh, I might look into doing a the auxiliary radiator delete. I don't know. Just run the one radiator and then uh, put the electric fans on there. I, I don't know. I'm going to look into that. Possibly, probably not. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. So let's get you back in there to hyperlapse and do the things and see if we can get this thing out of here shortly. Here we go.
Oh. All right, well, take two. Here we go. You can see the fan just went, whoop, you know, got on to it. So I guess it's from the motor mount that was in there. Uh, did look like he got a piece of the corner of the fan this time. So might be a wise decision to go ahead and try to get one. I don't know. I think it's just a few bolts here on the front, and I think it'll come right off. And that looks like it goes off the back. So that's even better. So I don't know. Anyhow, here's our space here. But we got that motor mounts back in there. And the other one, it's in there somewhere. So, anyway, we're going to look at that and see what we got to do. And might just go and throw the radiator in there so we can drive this thing to North Carolina tomorrow. So, and hope it don't do that again. So, uh, and hope it don't rain today. All right, so we can jump out and go get parts and get everybody together. Updates. Well, we got the new radiator, back in. You know, everything's there. Ain't leaking. Got four gallons of antifreeze in. And, well, it's, it definitely needs more. So I definitely lost more this time than I did last time. But it's probably because we were so far down the road. And I didn't even, I mean, we just, you know, I tailed it back up the road. Viper, I think, needs a bath. After all this is going to be done. But... You know, we don't have the inner fender well back in yet because, well, we're still waiting on the other motor mount. And that's probably going to be a separate video. We're, we need to end this one because it's getting long. And I ain't kidding you. But, uh, be out here. Let me get this. See if we can get that set up. There's the passenger side one. And, uh, I got that bolt right there out already because I wanted to see how difficult they're going to be. But yeah, there's you got four bolts there plus that one there, and I don't even know what we gotta do to get to it. But I do know from the YouTube video I watched, uh, so I'm an expert now. But you gotta take the driver's side out, take the passenger side loose, and then you gotta have somebody to help you push over on the engines while you, you know, finagle it out. So I don't know. We have to wait and see. Probably going to end up to tell my boy, Kenny, y'all met, come on over here and help his dad. So, I don't know. But we got to back this thing up because when we were down there earlier, the nut that looks like that one, as it goes on the boost tube down here, I dropped it. And I don't know what I did with it. And so, I borrowed that one there just so we could get that all back together. And, uh... So now I'm going to back truck up, see if we can't locate on it, find out what in the world. I mean, it didn't grow wings and fly away, so I don't know. But anyway, let me uh, do that, and then we'll I'll figure out some way to wrap this video up here soon. Talk to you in a bit. Uh, one doesn't look like the other. That's 413,000 miles versus new. All right, they're checking in. I, I was going to record me doing these, but it was too much. Hang on. All right. You can see the new one's in down there. I'm going to tell you, ain't no way doing this by yourself. You got to jack the engine up. This has got to come off. That's got to come off. Inner fender has got to come off. And then, you know, the bolt... <laughs> They weren't terrible to get it loose. We get that out of there. I took and uh, my son was here. Took that yellow ratchet strap that's underneath there and hooked it on the transmission. And I took a board and pushed over, and he cranked on it until we got it over enough, and then brought it out the top. Yeah, I'm telling you, that side over there was a bear. This side here, uh, I actually got it out by myself. I don't even know if you can see it back in there you yeah. can't get you in there maybe from up here no nope, but it's down there it, it wasn't too bad like i said there's four bolts that hold it on then the main motor mount uh i should have did something a little better on 
jacking it up because I did bend the oil pan some. Hopefully it's not going to be an issue. So but now we're just a matter of got to put the wheel back on, inner fenders, put the tubes and whatnot in there, and hopefully, hopefully Viper's done. Take it for a ride and see how it goes. And then we got time to get a hold of the dispatcher and try to get set up, get a load, get out of here. So uh, anyway, I'll let y'all know and we'll pick up in a bit. Well, let's wrap up this video. I'm hoping it's not too long. We're gonna, you know, go through it and edit on air in a minute. But uh, rode Vipers crossing again this morning, and so far everything seems to be doing good. I'm actually looking for a load to try to go. I'd like to leave and go get something today. But um, you know, all the videos we're always going to honor Christ. We're going to pray. We're going to do something. But this week, you know, I just felt like God was placing this particular verse on me, you know, because there's just, there's been a lot coming at me. And for you, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of you that here that's watching, there's a lot coming at you too. Uh, you know, for me, the work's been really super slow. Truck has been pitching a fit. You know, we, we've been dealing months on the transmission, trying to get this thing correct. And so, uh, we're not out of the woods yet, I, I, you know, we got to just test on it and trust it and regain that trust in it and, and so, but, um, you know, it's been weighing on a guy and I ain't kidding you, but, uh, this, uh, verse that I want to share is Psalm 23 and most of you hear it at funerals, but it doesn't have to, it doesn't apply only to, uh, to a funeral. It's the scripture and we can apply it to our daily lives. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though, or even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. That's encouraging because I'm going to tell you we all go through the valleys. I mean we have... The times that come at us and just knock the wind out of us. I mean, it could be a job loss, uh, you know, uh, something from the doctor telling you something's wrong. You know, uh, car breaks down, you know, just so many things can just, I mean, just seem like it hammers and hammers and hammers and just tries to beat you down. But we got right here, you know, even though we walk through those times, God is with us. He's got our back. He's always carrying us. You know, it tells us that he's going to prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. So the things that come against you, you know, God's going to be like, listen, they're, they're going to sit across and look at you being victorious because of, you know, me. You're hanging out with me. You know, no matter what, we are going to get through this valley. We can't do it on our own. We're going to get through it with uh, God's help. And so I just think about that and maybe go back and read this. The Lord is my shepherd. I love this. I have what I need. So he will always provide for our needs. Maybe not our wants, but our needs. And so, you know, just keep watching, keep looking for God and let him work in your life. So I hope this video has been an inspiration and help to you to know that you can have confidence. And, you know, when something comes along, you can fix it. You know, because I've never done a lot of the things that I've been doing to this truck lately, but God's blessed me. Uh, he took care of the radiator issue with me, um, so I didn't have to buy it twice. And so, uh, but it's just, I love watching and seeing God work. And uh, he's really, just, I mean, he's bringing me out of, you know, he's bringing me along. He's setting the stage. He's got something on the horizon, you know. Jeremiah 29 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, and have a hope and a future. So that's what we need to keep trying, you know, just keep pushing on. 
so but anyway on a truck i hope you learned something maybe if you own a ram uh, on how to work on some stuff i uh, did not go through detail on the motor mounts uh maybe you know i'll do something talk about it later uh just a little bit of you know instruction in there but it wasn't terrible you can do it it's just some, really some basic hand tools and so but anyway uh, let's wrap this video up in prayer like we always do and uh and get ready to go edit on it father we we thank you uh for just well keeping us safe getting us home you know a couple times and uh you know allowing us the ability to be able to work on the truck and be able to fix it and help me understand more and more about uh, the mechanical aspects of it things i didn't know and lord I thank you for giving me the confidence, you know, to be able to just trust you to help me to do the stuff that I need to do. And Lord, we just, again, we just, we ask and continue to bless us, keep moving us forward, keep challenging us and keep teaching us and help us continue to grow your channel. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name and amen. <clears throat> all right, you all, just as always, remember, continue to share Jesus in life one mile at a time and well, you know, we'll see you pretty soon, hopefully with the load. So, see you soon.